for Scrap and Abby, and I want to welcome you to day one for my Craftmas 2016 holiday projects I'm going to be sharing with all of you here on my YouTube channel. So if you aren't sure what Craftmas is all about, please go check out my Craftmas playlist, and I do have an intro video that explains to you what I'm going to be doing this holiday season. So what you're looking at here is a um, kind of a shabby chic feather boa little tree that I made and I'm going to make another one with all of you on camera so pardon my um, makeshift display area here I this is times like this is when I really miss my second farm table that I used to have in my craft room which I sold before we moved so um, I'm making do <laughs> on this one table for now so this is just kind of a quick visual of what we're going to be making today I of course will have some better photos um, at the beginning or end of the video. I never decide which I want to do until I go to edit. So this is just made from one of the um, styrofoam cones that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. And the base is a Dollar Tree um, glass candlestick. And the feather boa I found in the kids section. But I also saw them um, during Halloween. They had them up in the front of the store, but now we're past Halloween. So I guess that doesn't matter. But if next year, if you're looking, um, be sure to check that area as well in the front of the store. And um, let's see what else. So the little white seed beads that you see on the bird, those are also from the Dollar Tree. And everything else is from Michael's. The beads, the different... Um, um, oh, excuse me. And some of the beads I purchased from Amazon too. I'll, but I'll show you those once we get going. So I just kind of wanted to give you a quick visual of what we're going to be making. Now, because my camera is mounted over top of my craft table, you're, we're going to have a top view. I do have a smaller uh, tripod that can sit on my table. I'll try that angle to see if it's going to work. But what I'm going to have to do is just probably tilt this a little bit until I get a um, second tripod for my craft room so I can film these types of projects a little bit better. So I hope that you will please forgive me if the um, angle is not the best for this particular tutorial, but I will do my best moving forward to remedy that. So I'm going to go ahead and get my craft table cleared off and then we'll go ahead and get started. So I will see you in just a minute. Okay ladies, so I've gathered all the different supplies that we're going to be using for this particular project. You of course can take from this what you will. You can add to this, you can take things away, you can use whatever, whatever color of feathers you like of course, and different materials. These are just the colors that I like and what goes best in my craft room. So that's why you're going to be seeing lots of purple because I'm a purple girl as you ladies all know. So this is the um, Feather Boa Shabby Chic Tree that I made and I'll just kind of let you see that bird up close and you can see the white seed beads that I used on the top. I kind of wanted to give the bird a little bit more oomph to it. So this is what it looked like originally and I got this from Michaels and this and it's really cute this way too. I mean you don't have to dress it up like I did. I just wanted to make mine look a little bit different than um, how it looks whenever you purchase it. Um, at the store. So this is the tree again and we're going to be using all the different materials here to make this. I'm going to go ahead and set this one off to the side. Kind of get that out of my way there. And then just to kind of share with you some of the materials I'm going to be using. Here's the bird. This is just some different um, trims and things that I found at Michael's. Really great sell, by the way, going on 80 or 70% off all their trims like that. This just kind of, this isn't really like an eyelash trim. It's a little bit it's, this is what it looks like. I don't know what you want to call it. They didn't ha have a name on the listing. It just said it was a, um, oh yes, excuse me, eyelash wool. That's what this one was called. So there's that. Really, really pretty. And then I have some um, cheesecloth. This is one of the cones from the Dollar Tree. I kept the packaging on in case you wanted, wanted to see what it was called specifically. It's one of the cones in the floral area. Just some different um, pearls that are string. This is some eyelash trim here and kind of a cream color, a little bit more shiny white the glass candlestick, the feather boa of course here, and then um, a couple different um, strands of different colored pearls and some beads right here. And these are from Michaels. These three things are from Amazon as well as eyelash trim, but this is from Michaels as well. And then I do have one of these gorgeous um, fabric flowers from Mona Me Gabby that I use for the top of the tree. So I'm going to go ahead and set that to the side. Now what I think I'm going to do a little bit differently with this one is I'm going to actually go ahead and glue the um, cardboard base to the top of the candlestick and work. I think it's going to be much easier for me to actually have the tree on the candlestick so I can move it around a bit better. What I did the first time is I just had it sitting, the cone, 
once I got the feathers on it, I just had it sitting on top of this. I just put a few little dots of hot glue so I could pop it off. And that worked fine, but I think I'm gonna like it better if I can move a little bit more. So as you know, when you are working on a project for the first time or as you make more of them, you kind of improve on the method that you do. So that's what I'm gonna do here. So some of these parts, I'm just gonna either speed up the camera so it's like a process portion, or I'll just say, hey, I'll be right back, because a lot of this is just repetitiveness of me you know, kind of draping the, the um, feathers around and around the cone, and I'm sure it's not very exciting for people. Plus, I'm work trying really, really hard not to make these videos too super long, because I know that everybody has a ton of time to sit here and watch them. So what I'm going to do first is go ahead and just take a piece of cardboard, and you can use this from packaging, a box, whatever, and then you can also use chipboard or just some thicker cardstock if you want to do that. But I wanted to have something other than just this sitting on here. I wanted to kind of have more of a bit of a base, and I'll show you, because you can see it on the underside, but nobody's going to see it unless they tip your troops sit down like I'm doing right now, but that's what I mean. So there's that. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, quickly trace this on this piece of cardboard. And I recommend you keep your cardboard um, if you have a place to store it anyway, because I use this for all kinds of projects as I've shared on my um, channel already. It's just a great material to add different layers of textures and whatnot to your projects. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut this out really quickly and then I'll be right back. Okay ladies, so what you're seeing right here is that I'm just going to go ahead and cut out the cardboard and fit it to the paper, or excuse me, the styrofoam cone. I am leaving a little bit of a lip so that the cone has a little bit of breathing room on the other side of it just to make it more secure. Here I'm just taking some hot glue and I'm just putting that around, making sure that the candlestick is in the center of the cardboard piece, and then I'm getting ready to hot glue the cone to the cardboard. I found with my first one that this stayed on very well. I did move it around quite a bit just to see if it would topple over. Um, and unless you took, you know, one end in each hand and then forced it apart, I think it's going to be pretty sturdy. So, and I'm just making sure it's on there nice and tight and that it's centered as best as I can. And I did want to just point out that this glass candlestick is a little bit shorter than the other. I wanted that to be staggering. So what I'm doing here is I'm just cutting off the ends of um, the feather boa where they have just some string to hang it from the store. And I'm just kind of finding the end to start with and just kind of basically wrap it around. And what I'm going to be doing is what I'm saying here is that I'm just going to put like a bead of glue. That's how I'm showing you how I'm going to wrap it around. I'm just going to take um, a little bead of glue and go along the base of the cone. And I'm going to just wrap that feather boa around there. I'll do this around the whole um, perimeter, the base of it, and then I'm just going to wrap it around a couple times as you'll see, and then I'll just do some um, more hot gluing in various parts of the, um, the feather boa, adhering it to the styrofoam cone. It really broke my heart to have to trim this down because I think this looks so pretty, just the way it is, all fluffy and feathery and purpley like that, but this is supposed to be a tree, so I did need to taper it down a little bit so it looked like that form. And I apologize if you hear any background noise. This is, um, I do have my ceiling fan on again, so I'm hoping it's not too bad. And so now I'm just getting ready to go to the top. And then what I'm going to do is make sure that I leave the top flush, meaning I'm just gonna have like a few feathers on the top. I don't want any of the cording that is connecting all the feathers together. So whenever I put the topper on, which I just showed you, it lays nice and flush on top of the tree and it's not gonna be hanging over. So here I'm just looking for some of the individual feathers and I'm going to hot glue them down and just stick them on the top. So make sure that you are being careful if you're using um, you know, a really high temperature hot glue gun or if you're doing this project with kids. I am using a spatula in the Dollar Tree, but when my hot glue gun is on the lowest setting, I can touch it with my fingers, but here it's on high. Just to point that out. Just kind of picking up the mess. And what I'm doing here is um, putting down a bag so I can have that so I can basically trim the tree. And um, I recommend that you turn your ceiling fan off because I didn't <laughs> at first when I did this last night and it looked like there was a, two purple birds fighting in my craft room. There was just feathers everywhere. So, and basically I'm just cutting the shape. Now I'm gonna save those feathers in the sack for a different project down the road. I will put them in a Ziploc bag though so they don't fly all over my craft room as I move them around. So there I was just comparing 
that tree with the first one just to kind of get the similar shape. I'm not trying to make these matchy-matchy, I'm just trying to make them look similar, more like sisters than twins. And here I'm just kind of still cutting some more, trying to get that shape I, I'm looking for. You, of course, can leave your tree as puffy or as bushy as you like. I just kind of wanted mine to have a little bit of a taper so I could really kind of um, emote that tree form. And these are just scissors from the Dollar Tree that I'm using, by the way. Nothing fancy. All right, sorry about that noise if you heard that. And this next section here, I'm going to be um, adding some of that eyelash wool. This is something I picked up from um, Amazon. If you're interested in the seller, please comment below and let me know. And I'm more than happy to link the put the direct link to the um, um, eyelash wool that I purchased. So what I'm doing now is just basically wrapping this around and around around the feather tree and just kind of layering it like you would your lights or your different garlands but for in this one I'm just making it go down in a, um, um, a pretty symmetrical pattern because once I get to the beaded trims I will and the pearls I will be alternating those kind of in a spiral and now I'm just kind of fluffing out those little fibers so they're facing down there is no real way to get rid of that other than just doing what I'm doing that I could find at least against the feathers, probably on cardstock or something, you could comb it out a little bit better. So, and I was happy with how they looked. Now I'm adding some of that beaded trim, and what I'm doing is every three or four beads, I'm taking a dot of hot glue, and I'm sticking it to um, one of the feathers or a couple of the feathers. And that's what you're seeing me do here. And these hold really well with um, against the feathers. I was really surprised to find that. And adding those little bits of glue just here and there, like every you know third, fifth, sixth, whatever, however, what length you want, um, really makes them stay on to the feathers and really kind of um, adds that little whimsical touch that I was going for with this, um, with these two trees. And this is also something I purchased from Amazon. So again, comment below. If there's anything in the video that you want to know where I got it from, just comment below and I'll do my best to either link it for you directly or tell you where I got it. If I bought it from Michaels is what I mean. So I'm just kind of adding some more of that on. Just kind of pointing out how I'm kind of spacing each thing out here. And my glue gun at this point is on the lowest setting. I don't feel it, I didn't feel it was necessary to, um, you know, have it on super high because I didn't need to do that. And I was worried about it melting through the feathers. And so now that I have all of that on, I'm going to be grabbing some of that little bit darker colored um, pearl. I'm just showing you how I have it all arranged on there. Now I'm going to be, um, I just tipped off the end of the, the strand where the little, the fiber is, the string. So now what I'm going to be doing is just draping this kind of like in the pattern like you would garland, where this is a, um, a little bit more symmetrical, kind of looping down, basically kind of like icing on a cake, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And um, I do add hot glue to these as well because these are heavier and since this is a feather tree, there are no branches for me to stick those on. And I'm starting in the back I've already picked out what part is going to be my front and I'm just adding a little bit of glue and like I said these are sticking great these aren't even going into through to the styrofoam cone they're sticking right to the feathers and it's probably due to the fact that this particular feather bow or these particular feather bows were pretty fluffy um, if you you know I have seen some other feather boas at other stores that are a little bit um, sparse so that probably wouldn't work or you'd need to wrap around um, quite a few more feathers to have a little more of a background for those to stick on. So that's what I'm doing here. And these also are from um, Amazon. I got these on a really good deal. I didn't realize I was getting three spools, but it was a three spool pack and it wasn't a bad price. So that was a nice surprise when I opened the package. And I apologize again for the angle until I get a better tripod or a second tripod, I should say. This is kind of the best I can do for projects that are um, this type of size, so, and I apologize for that, but I'm, what I'm doing is just looping them down, kind of like in a chandelier type of form, and here I show you there quickly what it's what it looks like, and I just think this is really pretty. I do have a couple different tones of purple beaded trims and sprays, but I really kind of wanted to stick with the color palette that I picked because I could go completely banana nutcakes because... As a purple girl, I have a lot of purple stuff, as you can imagine, so I really needed to rein it in and just kind of make it to where it looked, you know, not simple, but not too overdone, where it looked kind of gaudy-like. At least it's not to me. This might be not this uh, might not be somebody else's taste, 
but I like it and since it's for me that's okay and um, it's very shabby chic I like the whimsiness of that eyelash wool and I will be adding some eyelash trim here as soon as I get done with this portion and I'm just telling you there again how I'm just going to take that last bead and I'm going to glue it to um, in between the string in between two other beads and it closes it off and you can't tell where it ends and I did make sure that makes that I ended the pearl strand at the back now here is some of that eyelash trim this is also from um, Amazon this is white and I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to basically spiral this down the tree one direction and then I'm going to do it the opposite direction so I have two layers and what I did there is put a little bit of glue on the fiber and then just stuck it to one of the feathers and I'll do that at the end of this one and then at the beginning and end of the second strand that I do and I think this kind of just really adds again that whimsical touch to this to this to these trees I keep saying this because I'm working on this one right now so I apologize for that but I really love this eyelash trim and now what I'm doing is um, letting you know that I got both of those done I've gathered the cheesecloth the pearls and some lace that I'm going to be using to in the bird that I use to make the topper of the tree so I will of course um, walk you through that as we go through this portion here and I thought this looked really cute when I um, how I layered it and basically made a nest for my little bird so now what I'm doing is getting the bird off the packaging which is from Michaels and here I'm going to be taking some cheesecloth that I had cut in half and then I layered it and I just kind of in frame a little bit and I'm putting that down as the first layer of the base or excuse me the top of the tree and I'm just kind of distressing it a little bit more pulling out those fibers and I'm just kind of positioning um, eyeballing where I want the position of the bird so I'm just adding a couple more layers and again fraying those edges again now I have some of that uh, trim and I'm going to be doing the flower portion first actually I apologize I'm getting ahead of myself I put up my craft mat because um, I don't have one of those hot glue mats but you could use you know whatever surface of this nature that you have just putting some hot glue taking it and kind of scrunching it up so I have a little bit uh, more compact of a flower just letting it cool there for a second then I peel it off and I kind of and I'm able to still kind of form it in the shape that I want and you'll see me kind of um, futzing with it here just a little bit trying to get it to fit just right on top of the cone and then what I'm going to do is just fan fold that ribbon as you're seeing and I'm putting hot glue just to fan fold it and I'll do that for both pieces and then they're going to be glued to the bottom one on either side of the flower the fabric flower which is from Mona Me Gabby I've had that for quite some time in my stash but they do still sell this in different colors and then um, after this part I just hot glued it to the top or actually excuse me I was um, checking the position again on this portion I apologize I'm mixing myself up with the first tree I did in the second because I kind of did the top pieces in different stages with this one versus the first one so I apologize for that now I'm just adding some more of that beaded trim to the top this is the white this time and um, the first layers I used were the lilac and I wanted to put this on there because I kind of again like that whimsical kind of a look it almost looks like a tree from Whoville is kind of the effect I'm going for and it just kind of gives it a little bit more visual interest I think at the very top of the tree and I'm just cutting some different lengths down there just to make sure that they are the you know in the correct position that I want and the right length that I want I also did which I didn't show on camera is I would take a certain length like maybe three inches or something and in the very center I would place the center of that strand on the top of the tree and then glue it down that way I had kind of more areas sticking up if that makes sense and all I did here was just loop these beads together like I'm showing you here and just made three little loops and then I made um, I adhered each loop underneath each side of the ribbon that's what I'm trying to show you there and then I hot glued it all to the top of the cone and then now what we're going to do because we have the base of the um, or excuse me it keeps the base layer of the cone portion as I'm trying to say um, I'm laying this down here so I can show you how I put these little pearls on I didn't video this because I was trying to save time and um, these are the strand of bit, uh, beads I purchased from Michaels I just put a little bit of glue and to cover the holes that I'm showing you there I just take a little bit of glue over the holes for the strands the beads and then I just press um, the feathers on either side and then you can't even see that there were ever holes there that step is optional if the holes um, don't mark, don't bother you but I for this particular project I didn't want the holes of the beads to be showing so now I'm just kind of giving the tree another overall look and what we're going to work on now 
are um, the different seed beads I'm putting onto the bird. Those are from the Dollar Tree. In fact, that whole container is from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to, I'm getting my beads out, but the first thing I'm gonna do is take some of that lace. I had cut the wire edges off. You can see those on the upper right of the screen. I'm just taking some lace and of that ribbon and just gluing it down on certain portions of that bird. I don't want the tail or the head portion to be covered. So I'm just taking some hot glue and um, laying it down pretty much pretty much over the um, middle portion of the bird. And I'm just cutting away certain areas so I could get it to lay flat. And it's okay if parts of this overlap because it just adds another uh, layer of texture. Now, since I'm going to be covering this bird with those seed beads, you might be wondering, well, why are you taking the time to do that? I did it for a couple reasons. One, because I wanted to kind of add um, a little bit more girth to the bird, um, something a little bit more smooth of a surface for those seed beads to kind of um, stick to. And um, I just kind of like how that looks. So of course, you don't have to do that portion at all. Any part of this um, tutorial is optional. You can make it what you want it to be. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can use different colors, different size of birds. Um, these are from Michaels, but they had they were 50% off, so I went ahead and packed, uh, picked up a couple packs of them. They came two in a package. You also can get these from the Dollar Tree in different sizes and colors. But I really liked the um, feathers on these ones, so I ended up using these instead. So now what I'm doing is just putting hot glue onto the bird and rolling it basically into those seeds and um, the seed beads. And I'm just pressing them down, rubbing loose any of the, um, of the ones that aren't adhered properly and they kind of just slough off, which is perfect. And I just keep adding sections of hot glue to the bird and I just keep pressing down the seed beads and then I brush away any that are not um, laying flat. And I'm just kind of fighting with those glue strings, as we all know from using hot glue. And just kind of getting around there. So I'm not doing those on the head or too much under the underside, but just enough to where the, um, you know, the underside of the of the bird, the beginning is kind of covered. So you can kind of, it looks a little more complete, like a completed edge. Now I'm just kind of pushing everything down, making sure it's nice and flat. And um, everything's adhered to the correct positions that I want it to be and I can easily brush away any that I don't want there. So after I get done with this, I am gonna go ahead and kind of, I'm um, just showing you what I'm doing there. And now I'm gonna go ahead and kind of um, close up this towel, cause I'll take care of that after the video, of course, not to take too much time. And I'm going to be um, pouring out some of the purple, actually like a lilac um, glass beads. And you can use tweezers like I have out there, but I found that for me, it was just as easy to take them um, between my fingers. So again, be very careful if you're doing this project with children or for yourself if you have a really high temperature glue gun, then you might want to use the tweezers. So I'm just basically putting a little tiny dot of glue on one side of the bead, and I'm just sticking them down randomly throughout, or I will be as soon as I get this um, my area set up here, I will be sticking them um, to on over all over the bird on top of the seed bead, just kind of in a sporadic pattern. I'm not making these in any particular pattern or anything like that, and I'm not covering the bird entirely. I just want it to be little pops of that lilac color. And again, these seed beads and glass beads are from the Dollar Tree. They have a ton of different um, color options. So um, I would encourage you to go pick some of these up if you want to use them for your crafting. Um, obviously for beading projects or jewelry, but you can use their different glass beads and seed beads for projects like this as well. So, And of course I stocked up on the purple because that's my color, <laughs> as you ladies all know. And now I'm just uh, kind of eyeballing the area and kind of adding the last few ones here just to make sure I am happy with the placement and kind of having enough of that lilac color throughout the, um, the little bird. And we do cover that clip. I'll show you that here coming up in the next um, section here. Just wanted to mention that. And I'm not sure what I'm doing there. I might have been picking off more of the glue strands and stuff like I'm doing here, so they're just everywhere. And after I'm done, I did take my heat tool over it carefully and melted all the ones. So now we're going to put that aside, and now we're going to focus back um, on completing the top part of the, the cone of the tree. So I'm just adding some more layers of the um, cheesecloth, I think is what I'm doing next, I think. Yes, I wanted to add some more layers of that just to kind of create that nest kind of look and just to kind of add a little bit more softness and some more layer and texture. Now I'm taking the hot glue and covering um, up that little clip because I don't want it to show. 
So I just put hot glue around it and I'm doing a couple layers of the cheesecloth and I'm just carefully pushing it around it to kind of hide that metal clip. And then once I um, snuggle it into the to the cheesecloth little nest there, it does cover up around it. So. And I'm just putting in quite a bit there and I'm also going to coat the bottom of the bird with the glue just because I want to make sure it stays really, really well. And I'm just kind of pressing it down just until it kind of hardens. And I did on the um, back side of the bird, I did add some more glue just to make sure it was going to stick there really well. And what I'm doing here, just the final last touches, I'm going to be adding those little remaining silver beads and the little bits of the um, gold trim. Those are the edges I cut off from the when I put the lace on the bird. I kept those wire edges. Always keep your scraps. And I'm just now doing the placement of those beads, kind of like little eggs that I'm trying to mimic, I suppose, into the ribbon and cheesecloth and floral, you know, little nest I have there. And then I'm going to be taking those little bits of ribbon, just basically folding them in half, and, um, you know, like crossover. And since they're wire edge that does stay, I didn't need to glue it. I'm putting a little dot of glue on the back. And I'll show you here in a second what I'm doing. I'm just putting them on there and they're kind of mimicking the branches that you saw in the first part of the video. And now I'm just adding some more glue to make it secure and going to be nice. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this part of the video and I will see you when we get to the final part where I have them displayed on my vintage hutch. I'll see you in just a little bit. Hi ladies, so here are the completed feather purple shabby trees. I think these turned out so cute. The one on the right is the one that we um, I just did on the video, and the one on the left is the one that I did last night. And I just think this these look really, really cute in my room. As you can see, um, I have vintage furniture in my craft room. This is a purple hutch I picked up um, on my five-year anniversary. My husband got it for me, and I love it. So it's all that chippy paint and purple and lavender and all that stuff that I love so much. So these match perfectly in my craft room. Now, I do have some more items that I'm going to be displaying um, around this up here. I'm, I'm going to change out some of the decor up here and make it more my holiday type stuff. But I'm still working on those projects or they're still packed um, from last year's projects that I've made. So I think these turned out really cute. These don't scream Christmas, at least not to me. So you could definitely keep these up year round if you like that shabby chic kind of feather look. Um, I have seen pink and blue and white feather boas before at uh, my local Dollar Trees at home in Oregon and here in Florida. Not the blue, but I saw the blue back home. And um, so that's where I picked these up, just in the kids section. And the trims and things are from Dollar Tree and um, also from uh, Michael's. Some of the beads and some of the beaded trim and a few things from Amazon, I believe. But um, I think they look really pretty. And those lights I got from the Target Dollar Spot, they're, they're $3, but they're in the Target Dollar Spot section. So um, I hope that you ladies enjoyed my very first Craftmas 2016 project with all of you and of course it had to be purple because that's my color so um, I thought this was really fun I do apologize if you don't enjoy the process where I speed the video up this was roughly about 40 minutes because I had to keep stopping because due to my facial pain um, I can't always articulate sometimes and my facial pain is very very painful and it almost stops me in my tracks and so I have belts of that so it's difficult for me to always film something long um, for a long period of time because of that reason. So I had to do the voiceover um, on some parts. So I apologize if you don't like that format. It's just kind of what I have to do sometimes just due to my facial pain. So it's just part of my life. So I just wanted to mention that. Those birds are so cute. Look at them with the little lilac glass beads on top. They're so pretty. I love them. So I'm really excited to have these as part of my craft room decor and part of my holiday decor for 2016 as well. So as always, please feel free to leave me a comment below if you have any questions about any of the process I did, if you, I didn't explain something clearly enough or, um, um, you know, you just didn't understand a part or had a, you know, just a suggestion or something, I'm more than happy I, um, to have you respond to me or to um, interact with me and then I'll do my best to reply to your answer in a comment and if I can't answer a question I will um, do another quick video showing the process or the portion that you, you um, didn't quite capture or I didn't quite capture actually um, from my video. So just want to share that with you ladies. I hope you have a fabulous day. Thank you for sticking with me on this little bit longer of a video and I hope that you're enjoying um, the first of my Craftmas 2016 holiday projects. So I will see you next time. Happy crafting, happy planning, and happy scrapping. Bye!